So I'm in a different shooting location than usual. Now, I know I've been doing a lot of these like sitting videos from my bedroom on the floor, but I'm actually in my nook and I can hear echoing where I'm at, but whatever, we're gonna have to deal. It's a long story. I have a vlog going up on Thursday that will kind of explain more, but there's some da water damage in my basement. Not a ton, but it was directly over where I work, so I'm sort of in a makeshift place till we get that repaired. Anyway, let's move forward to my favorites. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I have been doing quarterly favorites, so I thought this would be a great time to talk about some of the things I have been loving in the last three months or so. I've got an assortment of home and other items. Only one beauty item this time, which is usually different. I normally tend to have a few, but I don't have a lot of different things. It's a lot of the same stuff. And then I've got some planner related things. And I can hear Kitty meowing and he is my very first one. He's not a thing, he's a living be like a living creature, but he's also one of my absolute favorites in the last months. We've actually had him for almost exactly one month the day I'm filming this. We got him maybe a little bit more than a month. We got him Memorial Day weekend. They were having an a adoption special at Denver Dumb Friends League, which was the rescue we got him from. But that wasn't actually why we went in. We went in because we realized if we didn't adopt a new cat or kitten soon, then it would be too close to when we're gonna be going on vacation for him to be okay with Lou. And like he knew I was talking about him, he came up to me. So this is Odin. I actually will link below. There's a vlog where I talk about our like adoption story, how we got him, how he's integrating with Layla, our dog, and Lou, our already existing three-year-old cat. <laughs> Lou actually turns, ooh, we're pretty sure his, the birthday they told us is today. So today is his three year birthday. I should mention that to Jesse. It's been, uh, he's like, let me down. Having him around has been great, both because um, he's chatty. He's probably the most outgoing of all of our current pets. He's not afraid of Layla. Layla adores him. There's still, we have to be careful because Layla's a lot bigger than he is. But having him around has been absolutely delightful. All four of us are super in love with this little orange man. We're not trying to replace our cat Loki, who was also a personable orange man. He does bring a little of that Loki spirit that we've been missing. Anyway, yeah, Odin. Number one thing of the last quarter, even though it was the last third of the quarter. He's also still got that like kitten stinky thing going on where he hasn't quite figured out how to keep himself fresh and delicious. So we're getting used to it. But like I said, check out that vlog if you wanna hear his story, especially because he has some health problems that may be ongoing, but we're totally fine with managing. Okay, we're gonna go deep into some house and food related stuff because that has been kinda of high on my list recently. I've been trying to cook more at home. Uh, I've been trying to hydrate more, and so some of these things are just a way about that. And the first thing I wanna talk about is my iced tea maker. I'll leave a picture of it right here. It's kind of an interesting situation. I wanted something that could make iced tea quickly and be able to make it from loose tea because I have a shit ton of loose tea. I love making hot loose tea, but I hate waiting for iced tea. Like I, I love iced tea, my kids call it dirty water, but more on that in a minute. I love iced tea, unsweetened iced tea especially, of all types. I'm impatient as fuck. I'd rather go to Starbucks and buy one than make one myself. Unfortunately, Starbucks doesn't make my favorite anymore, which is their white iced tea. I'm really bummed about that. And actually Starbucks we'll be talking about in a second, so stay tuned. This iced tea maker is rad. What it is is a tall, skinny container and you fill the container halfway with boiling water and then you fill the little diffuser with whatever tea you wanna make. And so I've made it with different David's teas because I have a bunch of those. Our favorites thus far have been um, the Buddha blend from David's tea, which is a mix of green and white teas. And then um, the Paris tea from Henny and, I think it's Henny and Sons, it's Henny and Co, something like that. I will, if I remember to, I should make a note of that. I will link those down below. They are both like delightful teas without sugar. Sunny, who calls it dirty water, uh, actually will take the Paris tea and add like a pump of vanilla syrup to it from our coffee bar and they love it. Anyway, so you fill it halfway with boiling water, you put the tea in the diffuser, you diffuse it for however long the tea tells you to do it for, and then what you do is you take the tea out, you fill the rest of it up, you completely top it off with ice, screw the lid back on, make sure it's closed, and then you do like the shake weight. It's very inappropriate, like. 
very inappropriate. It doesn't take more than maybe 30 seconds of shaking and the tea is cold and ready to drink. Like it's already prepared iced tea. You can still use it to make like sun tea or however you want to do it, but if you want iced tea quickly, this thing makes it very fast and you just pop it in the fridge in the pitcher you made it in. We love it. I should probably make some more today. One of those things I got on Amazon that I wasn't sure about, but it wasn't very expensive and I figured, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but God damn it, I want iced tea and we love it. Speaking of Starbucks, um, I've been avoiding Starbucks, mostly because I haven't needed to go. We got our Nespresso, we have this iced tea maker, it's all great. But every once in a while, I'm out and about, and my first thought, if I am really thirsty and want something that's not the water, I usually I usually have my Hydro Flask with, with me wherever I go with icy cold water, but if I want something with flavor in it, my first <laughs> response is to go to Sonic and get a Dr. Pepper. And that's part of the problem here because there's Sonics everywhere, so it's easier to do that. But I'm trying to not drink as much soda, so I went to Starbucks, and I like their refreshers, especially the strawberry acai refresher, but they're too sweet for me. I finally managed to come up with a Starbucks order of that refresher that's not too sweet. It's refreshing, but um, and I really enjoy it. Uh, so what I get is the Trenta, like the biggest size, because I, I want all the fluid in the world, <laughs> of the strawberry acai refresher, and then I ask for extra ice and extra water. Now, some of you might be like, but Cindy, that means you're paying money, but it's mostly ice and water. Yeah, but if I'm really thirsty and I want something with some flavor to it that's not soda, this is a way to do it where it's not that sweet. And I also am aware that wanting a not very sweet ice beverage from Starbucks versus a giant Dr. Pepper from Sonic, that doesn't quite make sense, but when has Dr. Pepper addiction ever made sense? Moving on to some more food things, these two kind of go together. Uh, the first is a recipe for chimichurri, and it's for like just for the sauce. I will leave the recipe link below. I got it off of a blog that I found on Pinterest, and the reason I was looking for it was because I had I have my green stock, which I will also be talking about in a few minutes. Um, everything kind of connects in this favorites. My Italian parsley was going gangbusters before anything else in my green stock took off. And I was like, what do I do with it? And I was like, ooh, chimichurri. We always love it at Brazilian steakhouses. Why not make it and have it with something from the grill, right? So I looked it up and there's this recipe. Now the recipe actually calls for, I think, fresh oregano. And I have not been able to find fresh oregano. So I've kind of adapted the recipe with whatever I've got. I have made it with mostly Italian parsley, but a handful of cilantro, a handful of uh, basil thrown into it. That's been really yummy. And then the other thing I haven't done is char the lemons, just because I always forget to ask Jesse. I just put the lemon juice in straight. It makes a really good amount. It's yummy. I have gringo mouth and it's really spicy for me, but my family thinks it's actually like just perfect the way it is with like the amount of uh, red chili uh, flakes that it calls for. It's really easy, you just make it in the food processor, more on that in a minute, and, uh, and it's ready to go. We have had it with steak, we have had it on salmon, and we have used it as salad dressing. And all of those things have worked really, really well. So I 10 out of 10 recommend this if you enjoy like a fresh, bright, kind of summery sauce or dressing. Part of the reason I don't make sauces like that a whole bunch, part of the reason I don't make homemade pesto as much as I probably would, is that I hate cleaning my regular food processor. I think it's Cuisinart and it's big, it's the one with like the thing you push in, It's and it takes up a shit ton of space in the dishwasher and I just hate cleaning it. I keep it because it's really good to have when I need it. I just don't like pulling the whole thing out for a small amount of something like this chimichurri. Bringing up my whole food processor and having to clean that motherfucker just does not seem like a good idea. I finally picked up a mini food processor. Now part of me was like, Cindy, are you really gonna buy this just to make chimichurri? It was only like 25 bucks or 30 bucks. It's also Cuisinart. It's a tiny little guy. It's perfect for making sauces like that. You just still clean it the way you would a food processor, but it's so tiny, it doesn't take up hardly any space in your dishwasher. And so I think I will be much more likely to make homemade sauces with it. Very inexpensive, works perfectly for what I need it for, and I am going to definitely use it for other small batch things because I will be more likely to make them because of the ease of cleaning this motherfucker. You had noticed that mini food processor is also a favorite. <laughs> I guess that leads us into probably the most obvious of all of my favorites for this last quarter. If you have been watching my vlogs, following me on Instagram, or even just this video, it's my green stock planter. It is a vertical planting system, a container garden with a really great watering system. 
Uh, it stacks on top of itself. You can order their different, they have a couple different sizes of like the pockets. There's 30 pockets, which could be 30 plants or it could be more depending on what kind of plants you're growing. I got mine because I wanted to garden, but bending over is really hard for me and it has been working really, really well. We have it in our front yard on a spinner because it's the only place on our whole fucking property that gets sunlight because we have trees, which is great for the heat, but not so great for gardening. In mine currently, and I will link a vlog down below where I talk more about it, I have strawberries, herbs, green beans, which I'm about ready to harvest a whole bunch of. Yes. Um, strawberries or, oh, lettuces and arugula. I already pulled the arugula out because the heat got too much for it and it bolted. And I haven't put anything else in yet because I haven't figured out what I want to put in yet um, in those three pockets. But the romaine is coming back, so I'm doing good with that. Uh, then I've got the green beans and I've got tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers in the bottom tier. Now the cucumbers I've tried twice now and both times they have not enjoyed themselves. So I don't know if I'm going to do those again next year, but my tomatoes are taking off and the peppers are doing okay. Green beans, great. I think of everything I've put in there so far, the only thing so far that I'm very disappointed in is the cucumber and I think it just wasn't working. Totally worth it. Jess and I have already been talking about me getting a second one for next year that I can do all green beans or all strawberries because... The problem with green beans and strawberries is, is that in order to get like enough of them, you have to have a shit ton of plants. And so I might do that next year, but that's a year off. So we'll talk later. I've got a couple of well, like a beauty and then like a clothing item. The beauty item is actually a perfume. It is the Jo Malone Wood Sage and Sea Salt Cologne. I, I did not need an expensive perfume habit. I did not. Since, oh, I want to say like 2001, maybe a little later than that, at least in my first marriage. Since then, I have the only fancy perfume I've ever gotten into was Clinique's Happy. I'm one of those. My sister was a CK1 person in the 90s, Clinique Happy. It just is the one that worked for me. I love fruity scents and I love floral scents, so it worked. For some reason though, in the last couple of years, it smelled like my body chemistry must have changed. It might be because I'm getting closer to menopause. It might be because of all the medications I'm on. It might be how close I am to kidney failure. It might just be because my body chemistry has changed because that fucking happens as you get older. It wasn't smelling right to me, like at all. It was smelling pretty funky to me. So I got a sampler set of Jo Malone perfumes from Sephora. And um, I fell in love with a couple of them. The two I loved were the English Pear and Freesia and the Nectarine Blossom and Honey. And Jesse got me, this is not the full size, this is like the medium size. He got me both of these for Christmas and I love them. Well, I also picked up a little sample size from Sephora of two other scents, Wood Sage and Sea Salt and something else. And I talked about them in Project Stash Down. Well, during that Project Stash Down, I fucking fell hard for this wood sage and sea salt to the, like, I still use the other two, but this one is my absolute favorite. I wound up using up the little travel size and then buying the full size and I'm already like going down on this one. <laughs> I'm gonna read you the scent notes because it'll be easier to describe from the website than myself because I just, I can't, I can't. <laughs> it smells good. <laughs> Escape the everyday along with the windswept shore, waves breaking white, the air fresh with sea salt and spray mingling with the woody earthiness of sage, lively spirited and totally joyful. Mm. So it says it's tasting note, tasting notes? Ew. A uh, top note is ambrette seeds, heart note is sea salt and base note is sage. This is not a scent that I would normally gravitate towards, but for some reason, I just absolutely love it. The other thing I love about this is I'm pretty sure it's a really, I mean, scents can be worn by anybody, but this one doesn't smell super, quote, feminine or masculine. This would be a really good, maybe I should spray some on Jesse and see what he thinks. He has a cologne he really likes, but this is very much something that can be used as like a kind of a gender neutral scent, I guess maybe it's what I'm going for. The other thing I never noticed, but I'm looking, they have on the Jo Malone website, they actually give you like pairing or layering suggestions with their other fragrances. And they actually suggest layering this with English Pear and Freesia. So maybe I'll do that at some point, but yeah, I love this so much. We'll definitely be repurchasing it when I run out of it. Although I might try and run out of some of the other ones I have first because it's not, it's not inexpensive. I think this is like 70 or 80 bucks for this tiny little thing. So. Clinique Happy would never. And then the clothing item is actually shoes. These I can totally lay at the feet. Ba-doom-ch. 
of Julie's plans when she posted about them. And then Erica from Cricut Paper Co. joined in like the, the joyful uh, heralding of these shoes when I mentioned that I got them. And it's Hey Dude shoes, specifically the Wendy shoes. I have three pairs of them now. I'll pop a picture up of them here. They're slip-ons, like a leather coated, but it's a memory foam insole. I love them. There's a couple of reasons why. For one, my feet are not the same size on any given day. Now, I know we all swell and everything changes, but for me with kidney disease, my feet really swell and then contract over the course of a given day. I have basically gotten to the point also with how big my kidneys are that bending over to tie shoes is a recipe for disaster. And so I almost always now wear slip-on shoes. In the past, it's always been flip-flops and I still wear flip-flops. I also have my teaks, which I absolutely love, but I needed a more casual shoe that was going to be better for going for walks with the dog. When I go for walks with flip-flops, I get like little, especially if we go to the school to go like walking in the, the trees they have there and get little bits of dirt and it really sucks and I'm not gonna wear my teaks walking around in the dirt. <laughs> so I normally would wear sneakers, but you have to lace them. Now I have these Hey Dudes and they are so comfortable. They're great for walking, they're very lightweight, and on me at least, they're loose, but not loose enough to fall off so that there's extra give in case I start to swell. I think these are gonna be great road trip shoes and I can't wait to experiment with that. I have three pairs. I have a gray pair, I have kind of a khaki pair, and then I have a white pair and they are machine washable, which I have already done once. You just take the insoles out and then you throw them in the wash. The biggest issue I've had is with cleaning the insoles. I kind of made a mistake with that and now I need to give them another good wash, but you can also order replacements from the website. So for me, they are a great no lace slip on kind of walking shoe that is both comfortable and accommodating to my swelling feet. One more home item and then I've got a few planner related accessories. The home item is actually a piece of furniture that, but it's not even the piece of furniture, it's like the pieces that go into the furniture and that's the little Ikea cat palace that we have created. I did that in a recent vlog as well. I believe it was the one where I talk about Odin. Ikea has this line, it's called Lurvig and they have the, it's a bunch of different pet stuff. But one of the things that they've done is take certain items that would fit in their calyx system, the cube system, to turn it into like a cat house. So if you imagine those like boxes that you slide in and out of those cubes, well imagine there's a hole in the side so a cat can crawl in and then they make cushions that fit right in there. We've done that and not only does it look really great in my bedroom, like it looks perfect. We needed a piece of furniture there, it looks perfect but both cats really like it, especially Lou. What he usually does is he'll sleep with us for a while, then he'll get up in the middle of the night, get some water, and then retire to the cat house and sleep in there. And it's just so cute to wake up and see him in there in the morning. I might even have a picture of it. If I do, I will uh, drop it here. And if I don't, then I guess I'll cut this part out. <laughs> yeah, we love it though. If you have cats or dogs, they have a bunch of items in general from this line. But if you have a cat, I would especially look and you have are short on space or whatever, look into the Lervig line for adding some little cat cubbies into your house. Now that we've talked about those things, let's go quickly through the planner things I've got because it's actually probably not gonna take very long. The first is my Pilot Ultrafine Permanent uh, Pen. This is the pen I've been using on vinyl stickers like Chrissy Ann Design and Cricut Paper Co. I feel kind of like an ass saying this is one of my favorites because I've also been running into problems with it smearing. However, there is something about the tip and the way that this pen writes. I just like writing with it more than the other ones I've used. The Microperm, the Uni, the Microperm and the Le Pen Permanent and the Sharpie marker. All three of those do not delight me with writing the same as this one does. I need to try the Uni Pen permanent pen because maybe that one will work better, but I love the tip of this so much that I'm almost willing to deal with the smearing. But then when it smears, I'm like, fuck, I need a new pen. But I just, this is like my problematic fave. <laughs> Second is another recommendation from Julie's Plans. She kind of influenced me this past quarter and it's the slice tool. This looks like a little pen, but it's actually a ceramic blade and it does, it's perfect for cutting stickers. If you press down just hard enough, and it does take a little bit of practice, you can cut right through a sticker, but not cut your paper. It's easier to use because of its pen-like style than an X-Acto blade or any of the other blades I've used. I have 
had a lot less fear of cutting myself using this thing. And the pack I got off of Amazon had this plus some spare blades, but I haven't had to use them yet because I don't cut hella shit. It's like stickers when I'm planning my week out. So love this safety first. And then finally, and this is going to sound silly because I've talked about it before, but I finished it. So I'm going to bring it up my Moxie Life weekly six month planner. This I'm in my last week of this as we speak and this thing has been fucking great. If you watched my recent video, I will link it below, of my quarterly assessment, you will see how good I feel about a lot of my personal goals right now. And I feel like this system and having the check-ins every single week and having it all tied together in one book as opposed to a power sheets and a planner has been really good for me this year. Really, really good. It's the planner. I love the planner itself and I love the system within it. And I am excited to bust into my new one next week. I've already started setting it up. I've got that video up already as well, but I can't wait to actually start using it. And I will look at this one with fondness. The whole first half of the year is in here and I'm excited for my second half of the year in the new one. So those are my favorites for quarter two of 2022. I would love to hear from you in the comments below something that you have been loving the last three months. It could be something that's new to you or something that you have had for a long time and you just want to sing its praises. Let me know because as much as I love to talk about consumerism on some of my videos, what I really love is also to be enabled and to enable others. So that's what this space is for. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, friends, peace.